Welcome to Extreme Reloading. You know one of the goals of Extreme Reloading is to craft ammo that's so consistent that it has the potential for every bullet to fly through the same hole. Over the next couple of episodes, we're going to be looking at the effect of neck tension and specifically looking at its effect on both consistency of our muzzle velocities and precision of our groups downrange. Now, to develop a meaningful experiment to answer the question, what effect does neck tension have on precision and consistency, what we need to do is we need to remove all variables save for the one that we're testing. In other words, we want to remove all variables or sources of inconsistency except the variable of different neck tension. Now you may remember season or so ago we did a lengthy experiment on primers and primer pockets and flash holes and I called it primer mania. And in that experiment we used Federal Champion Premium Brass. And I still have that brass and it's the same brass that we're going to be using for this experiment and I have five different subsets of that brass. You may recall we simply labeled those A or Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, and Echo. Echo was our control set last time and Echo is going to be our control set this time. I'll explain more about that when we get that far. But this brass has only been fired twice. It was factory brass so I fired it once and then I fired the same brass a second time with our Primer Mania experiment. Now it's going to go into its third firing and so it's still some pretty new brass. So this brass has been very carefully selected to be as consistent as possible and in fact it has very little uh, variability in the case weights. The primer pockets are all identical. That was prepared previously the primers that I'll be using will be, once again, Federal Champion Gold Medal Match Large Rifle Primers. In our Primer Mania experiment, we certainly saw the effect of premium primers. I could be using my CCI Benchrest primers as well, but one of the things that I noticed as I was preparing this brass is that all of the brass that used CCI Benchrest primers grew in length and required trimming. All of the brass that used the federal primers didn't need trimming. So I am choosing to use the federal primers in this case. Either way, very consistent, very uniform primers. I'll be using RL15 powder and each charge is going to be individually weighed and weighed exactly to the tenth of a grain. And I'll also be using weight sorted Sierra tipped Match King bullets and in fact these are all 168.4 grain bullets. The neck tension itself is going to be set by our Hornady match grade neck sizing dies and I have four different bushings for this die 0 0.332, 333, 334 and 335. My control set, set echo, is using and, and those cases are going to be neck sized using my Forster competition neck sizing die and I tested that one and it is affecting a 0 0.334 neck sizing. Now for this to really be meaningful though, the cases or the case necks have to be consistent as possible. Uh, they have to have very consistent neck thickness because those dies are not really going to affect the neck tension itself. I'll show you how we will calculate actual neck tension applied, but it's going to be extremely variable if one case has very thick necks and another case it has very thin necks and they're all part of our 
subset alpha or A. So what I need to do is I first need to take each of those subsets and I'm going to be looking at the neck thicknesses and I'm making two measurements. One is the minimum neck thickness and the second measurement is the variation of their neck thickness. In other words, I might be recording 0.016 as the minimum neck thickness and then in parentheses plus 0.02 or whatever that indicates my variability. So in effect then we have two measurements, a minimum and a maximum case neck thickness. Now if we look at the results of these measurements, you know these federal premium brass, it doesn't really look that bad. It actually looks like it's, you know, pretty good brass. But this understand uh, is brass that I had previously prepared for our primer mania experiment. And even though it looks pretty good right now, I'm not quite perfectly content with it at this point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn these necks down just to try to reduce the variability, not to make them necessarily thinner, but to reduce the variability in neck thickness. So what I have here is the Hornady tool. I've got some other videos out on this that shows a lot more detail than what I'm going to show today. But just as a quick overview, I am using a little bit of uh, thread cutting oil. Got this from Home Depot. Uh, one jar like this uh, will probably last me a lifetime especially since this is the application that I use it for and I don't use much. All I do is I put a little bit of, of that thread cutting oil on the cutter itself, a little bit right there, um, and, and that is it. I'm going to use this little Ryobi screw gun here. Uh, it's not terribly powerful and I like that because that gives me a lot better control uh, over the, uh, the, the case as I'm turning it, moving it in and out, locking it and unlocking it. Here we go. Place this here. Now I'm going to lock it in place. And that's another reason why I like this Ryobi. Uh, it's not going to uh, spin out of my hand from the torque that it produces. And now we're going to move this in carefully. Just take off a little bit, and in some cases, some instances, it may not take off hardly anything if that case was pretty close. It looks like it just took off a little bit in this, case, in this instance. Unlock it. want to do is we just want to take off the high points as you can see right there kind of uniform the whole thing let me zoom up on this a little bit for you so you can get a better look at it Just a little bit coming off. Boy, that looks good. I'm going to go ahead and get all the rest of these finished up. Then it's going to be loading time. Pop in the primers very carefully using my 21st century RAM. Very carefully load the RL15 powder charge and seat those bullets. And I seat all my bullets using the Redding Competition Bullet Seating Die. This is really a fantastic die and I can um, adjust down to a, easily to a thousandth of an inch of how I want that bullet seated and I can achieve different indexes for one bullet, maybe a Nossler, another bullet, my Sierras, another, my Barnes bullets, 
and simply turn out uh, and set the new index and those rounds or those bullets will be seated exactly as I like that type of bullet to be seated. So that's really a fantastic die. Now as I prepared this brass, notice how consistent the brass ended up being. We have less than two grains difference in the weight of each of these subsets A through E and in fact uh, set E is highly consistent as far as its case weight is concerned. The one thing that I didn't do special at all with that control set, set E or echo, is I did nothing at all to the case necks. Those case necks are exactly as I pulled them from the boxes uh, as they came from the factory. Now as we look at case neck thickness, Notice that each one of our subsets or our sets are very consistent now. In fact, after turning and remeasuring these cases, the standard deviation of case neck variability or mean case neck sizes is actually now less than a thousandth of an inch. So that is about as consistent as I'm going to be able to get that stuff. Now set A has been neck sized using a 0.332 bushing. Bravo is using 333. Charlie, 334. Delta, 335. And Echo, our control, is also using 334, but that one is being sized, remember, with that Forrester competition die. So now when we look at case neck tension, what we do to calculate this is first of all we measure the outside diameter of the case neck after it, it has been sized and all the preparations have been completed and just as advertised those Hornady dies did in fact affect the case neck size exactly uh, as they were supposed to in other words set A was 332 and so on and so forth then of course I prime, put the powder charge in, and seat that bullet. And then I'm measuring the case neck again. And there's going to be some expansion of that case neck when we insert and seat that bullet. And that measurement is then used to help us calculate neck tension. And what's very interesting now is that sets a, B, and C actually all have the same neck tension. In other words, three thousandths of an inch of tension placed on that bullet. Set delta is different. It has only one one thousandth of an inch of neck tension. And so it is the loosest, if we call it that, of the entire batch that we're going to be shooting. Our control set uh, is right in between those two, two thousandths of an inch of tension being placed on those bullets by the neck of that case. So now if we think about this, what we can expect is that even though the necks were sized using different bushings or inserts from that Hornady die, the neck tension itself ended up being the same for three of those. And so we can expect that those three sets, A, B, and C, should have very, very similar results as far as precision and consistency is concerned. We can also expect that set delta, D, will have a different result and also a somewhat different result from set echo if we don't see any difference between those groups then we have to assume that neck tension really doesn't matter but I don't really think we're going to see that I guess the real question then is number one does neck tension matter and then number two is precision and consistency improved by a tighter neck tension or a looser neck tension, or at least as far as this Ruger Precision Rifle 
is concerned. So in our next episode of Extreme Reloading, we're going to head out to the range for our first of three sessions shooting these different loads with various different neck tensions. And what I'm doing is I'm going to be shooting five shot groups over a three different session time period. I'm going to go out one time on one day and I'm going to shoot five different groups and then another day I'll go back out and I'll shoot a second five shot group and then on a third day I'll go out once again and shoot the final five shot group. And the other thing I'm going to be doing is as I'm going out I'm not going to shoot group A and then B and then C and D and so on and so forth. I'm going to mix them and match them. right? Uh, and what I'm doing that for is I also want to take a look and make sure that barrel warming, barrel fouling, so on and so forth has no effect on the results that I'm going to get. We'll analyze all those results as they come in and hopefully we'll be able to answer those questions regarding the effect of different neck tensions. So I hope that you'll be joining in again on our next episode of Extreme Reloading.